You think about those that have served the Lord in the past. They've always had opposition. And I think of Noah. He was a man that, in the finality of the matter, the only people saved from the flood was Noah and his own family. His three sons and their wives and his wife. Eight souls were saved. That means the rest of the generation was not listening to Noah. The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. And in order to do that, you've got to preach Christ, hadn't you? Because he is our righteousness. But Noah had a strange thing to say. He was telling about a destruction that that rain was going to come from the sky and cover the earth. Aforetime, the earth had given forth moisture and it had not rained. But here, this preacher out here, speaking of judgment day, and says that the flood's going to cover the earth to prepare for that day. He wasn't popular, was he? You could speculate at what happened over that 120 years that he labored in building that ark. But the important thing, in fact, is they still did not receive his message. Or at least they didn't believe it. He was forced to warn the people. And folk, you're not going to be accepted with that kind of warning. You're not going to be accepted with the most popular groups. If you will, look in the middle of your page, Luke 6, verse 22 and 23. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did the fathers unto the prophets. They stoned the prophets, didn't they? And they killed them any way they could. If you read the, the history of what happened to those 12 apostles and how all of them one after the other was put to death. James beheaded, was he? Peter crucified upside down because they didn't like the message that he preached. And folk, I'm telling you, the message that we preach is a message of salvation, a message that will save the soul of man for eternity. Quite often my mind tries to grasp an eternal age. It's impossible. You can't grasp it. To think of something that never, ever ends. And folks, that's how the Lord saves us is for, for time and eternity. And just think, in the million of years beyond this point, my own opinion is that you're going to look, be able to look back at Super Bowl Sunday, labeled by the world, and remember that you were in the church and remember the message that you heard. Amen. But, folks, we have some enemies. The Lord said that He had enemies. He said, they persecute me, they're going to persecute you. And folk, he was perfect, and we're not. He never preached an imperfect message in his life. Every word he chose to speak was truth. 